So you're an engineer, you're an entrepreneur, among other things, a supporter of local schools and the arts and so on and so forth. Um, most engineers out, out but in But it's much less to be an, a supporter of things like that, and more important to give your own self and your time and make the sacrifices that are important to you. So I actually taught elementary school and middle school and teachers for eight years secretly because I felt inside, I, was, I felt guilty about just giving money. So, so let's go down that path um, because education is a big challenge in, in this country. What, what are your ideas about how to make it um, better, more efficient, how to get people more involved? It's not just about throwing money yeah. at the problem. All my life, I've listened to people who are in a position like I am, on a couch, with an audience, being able to speak, what we have to do to fix education. They've all been saying the same things. We've got to teach kids to think and not just learn and not just memorize and all these ideas. And has education really changed throughout my life? Are kids really learning more than they could have because of all this good intent? No, the school system's the same. It teaches the same number of hours of the same subjects that it always did. The approaches are, are very much the same as ever, and there's been no movement. So I don't think there's anything I could say that would really change things positively. School in itself is pretty much a restrictive force on creativity. School teaches you from the day that you're in there <laughs> that the right answer when you come to class, you do the exact same pages in the book, the same hours as everyone else in the class. <clears throat> you don't go off in your own little directions and your own angles. You don't have that kind of autonomy and freedom in school. And you come in and you take a test and you get compared to others from day one and told who is good and who is not good. And by third grade, the teachers can easily spot the kids that have given up on education being important for life. So it's not, and you're, you're told, you, you want to open that drawer? I'm sorry, it's a class of 30 people. I cannot manage you unless you're all in your seats at the same time. So you're taught from day one, don't try to go off in a direction you think of. That is not the, the way to the future. And your answers on the test, they better be the same as everybody else in the class, or you are not called intelligent. So if you try to think of something a different way, why, you know, two canoes aren't really going to meet on the river at this time because there's wind, you know? If you try to say something like that, you get the low grade and they get the high grade. Um, so schools are really um, an antithesis to creative thinking. Maybe someday, if you had one teacher on one student, if you had 30 teachers in a class of 30 students, boy, they would all get individual attention, be moving at their own paces. So I think someday a computer could possibly be a teacher. Computers today help with education, but they aren't teachers. They aren't that human element. And I think we're getting very close to it. We're building small computers in the hand that have all the sensors that a human has, you know, of movement, of, of eyesight, of hearing. And I think we're getting closer to where we can make devices that become a friend and not just a, a computerized textbook.